And because of this, lots of people have been going um, to see alternative methods of finding help and seeking support, one of which is online. This has caused a, a resurgence of mental health forums such as Seven Cups of Tea and social media sites such as Talk Life, where people can go into and find support and seek other people. However, the team at Microsoft Research and I were very interested in asking the question about how do, about how to actually evaluate these uh, online forums. Cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, has been shown to be effective in one-to-one -one personal therapy sessions, so is there a way to translate that online? Um, and we wanted to really evaluate if these online forums are being helpful or not. So there has been some research um, surrounding this area. Um, there's going to be a related works page in a bit, but we were mostly interested in the question of moments of change, which we defined as a positive change in sentiment by the original poster, or OP, um, towards the topics that they, were, that they seek help in throughout a forum thread. So just a few definitions. Um, this is our data set, so we partner with TalkLife, which is one of the biggest social media sites for mental health, and you know, hundreds and thousands of users. And this is an example of a forum thread. So it's just a conversation, and each unit is a post. The purple, the one in purple, is the one by the original poster or OP. So that's just a few definitions. We had, so we had a bunch of data, and we wanted to um, basically find out if in a specific forum thread, the OP is feeling better or not. So is this conversation effective or not? And so that, um, that brings us to the questions. Can we predict or detect a moment of change or not? If, they, if we detect not, that means that we probably need experts and moderators to come help out this forum thread and um, you know, make, help make the OP feel better. And secondly, does culture matter? Because there's been studies that show that linguistic and emotional expressions uh, vary throughout culture. So can we actually build a machine learning algorithm that is able to generalize towards all culture or is it the case that when we try, we fail? So. That was also a question, and we chose, um, for the specific culture, we chose Indian because my coworkers, and it was Microsoft Research India, and we were also very interested in how um, Indian users in the online forums express their emotions as well. So how do we get this gold data? We had a bunch of forum threads from TalkLife, and we um, used an internal service, sort of like AMT, Amazon Mechanical Turk, and we, this is basically what we showed them. So we had a post, we had a sentiment between negative three, the most negative, to three, the most positive. And that's because we want to know if a person feels better or worse, and someone can feel, go from feeling very bad to less bad. So it's not just a polarity zero, one scale. So that's why we use negative three to three. And topics, and we also ask them to label the topics that appear in a, in a post. We got pretty um, moderate um, inter-reliability scores, so we had three workers for each post, and we, get, we got the, um, the gold sentiment and the gold topics for each post by averaging out the answers from the workers. Cool. So what factors feed into a moment of change? Um, we decided to just first do a baseline approach to see if it is even possible to detect these moments of change. And we used a couple of uh, families of features. So first is Luke, which is very well renowned in the clinical psychology and you know, linguistics plus psychology field. And it basically has counts of um, words that are attributed to different emotions like happiness or anger, we looked at swear words, things like that, punctuation, and meta-based. So the, does the length of post, the number of words, and even locations have anything to do with detecting um, if a, a thread is uh, effective or not? So with location, we looked at um, the percentage of posters that responded to the OP that came from the same location as the original poster. And we, for this baseline, we, we just wanted to see if we could just use a XG boost, gradient boosted trees, to, um, to see just how well it did. Um, and we were actually able to get pretty good results. So 
we trained on the Indian data set and then tested, and then we also had the non-Indian data set, which is more culturally agnostic, and we trained and tested on both. Um, we got pretty high scores, so 0 0.86, 0 0.9 for um, when we trained on the same culture, but when we tried to get a pre-trained model from one culture and apply it to another, it actually lowered our scores, and this suggests, we still have to do further research, but this suggests that it is, um, there is cultural differences, and you can't just train a model that would help detect um, shifts in emotions for all cultures, um, which was very interesting. However, then we got to thinking, okay, so we can detect binary-wise, like zero, one, if um, a thread has a moment of change, but do we really understand the mechanisms, the mechanisms behind it and what's going on, what they're talking about? Um, and so we decided to look deeper into that and use natural language processing. So we can look at the problem of topic extraction, basically figuring out um, what people are talking about in these posts um, as such. So this is a post and the label would be the topics that appear in, in the post. And the first way that we thought of doing this was using something, a very common uh, topic modeling method, latent dirichlet allocation. And it, while it worked great for basically training it on the entire corpus, and it was great for understanding what are the topics that people are talking about in mental health care forums in general, it wasn't so good at detecting for a specific form thread what the OP was talking about. So let's see why that is. So one of the um, topics that the LDA got was this topic of you know family relationships, relationships, so like mother, boyfriend, sister, dog, father relationship. And that was great for understanding that this is a topic that people talk about in mental health forms. However, if you have a post like, like so, which may have like, the topic would be like mom or friends and maybe self-confidence, the LDA decides to attribute this topic of relationships to the post. But in doing so, there's different subtopics and words in the topic that don't, that don't, that aren't actually in the post. Because for example, father isn't in the post, dog isn't in the post. And this is very, pretty bad because if we want to understand what's going on in mental health forms, precision is actually more important than recall. So it's okay if you don't get all of the topics that someone talks about in the post, but it's pretty bad if you get topics that the person isn't talking about. So that's, so LDA was pretty bad with um, precision. So for the take two, we decided to go with um, something a little bit more sophisticated, so sense to vec and clustering based. Uh, sense to vec is a word embedding um, model, and which basically maps words to some n-dimensional representation that encodes its semantic value. And we first, given a, given a post, we would parse it through and get all the words as representations using sense to vec and then we would do some initial clustering. So we would cluster each word um, with words in the post that are more similar to it. Then we would go through a series of two, two methods. So the first is merging. G given a pair of clusters, we would um, calculate the average cosine similarity between the members of one cluster and members of another topic cluster, and if they're similar enough, if they're above a certain threshold for cosine similarity, we would merge them. Secondly, we would prune. So given a um, cluster, we would, we would calculate the average cosine similarity between one member and the rest of its members, and if, and if it was below a certain threshold, then we would prune it out. So that was our second approach to doing that, and we, be, we benchmarked LDA versus this clustering-based model. Um, using basically a corpus from the human annotated um, data set of posts and the topics that are attributed to the post. So this is precision recall on the bag of topics. And we see that SETI topic, the clustering based approach worked better for precision than LDA, although there's still room for improvement in recall. So 
there's still room for improvement, and this leads to the current work that we're doing now. Um, this semi-topic model is only trainable by really two um, parameters, which is actually one. So basically the threshold in which you merge and the threshold in which you prune. So basically what is the cosine similarity where two words are similar enough to be in the same cluster and um, vice versa. And so it's not very trainable and also um, it only takes into account direct nouns. So if you have something like, I don't like it, we don't know what it means. So it doesn't take into account the grammatical structure of, of a sentence at all. And so that comes to our ongoing work in which we completely revised our way of thinking, started afresh, and thought of this question as a keyword extraction problem. So given the same post that we've seen a couple of times, instead of having it as a bag of words, as you know, the topics, as the label, we can think of bit masking this sentence. So each word in the post will be assigned zero or one, where one means that it's a topic or a keyword, and zero means it's not. And so we're using, we also updated our uh, word embedding methodology because Elmo came out and Elmo has been shown to be state of the art as opposed to sense to back. Um, so we update that and we're currently um, doing this using RNNs. It's still ongoing work, so I didn't put in any results as of yet. Um, cool. So how can we, so you know, we have these cool methodologies, deep learning, machine learning, whatnot, but let's tie it back to actually the problem. How can we actually use this topic modeling method to help understand what people are talking about in mental health forms? And this is the downstream task. So this is what we would like to do and one application of um, the topic labeling models. So basically given a post you, um, by the OP in a form thread, we can label the topics and match the topics. So here you can see that the OP talks about girlfriend and career. So we could label um, and we can detect that post one and post two have the same topic. And then we want to detect that in post two, there's an additional topic that's introduced. And this could help us understand more granularly what is happening in these forms. And for example, if an OP is distressed about a certain topic, then perhaps we could um, get experts who are trained in addressing certain topics to help the OP, as opposed to just a random person who could help the OP. Um, and so there's clearly a lot to be done in this field and uh, applying natural language processing methods to digital mental health. I've talked a bit about topic modeling, but we can, but there's also the whole thing about sentiment. A lot of sentiment tasks right now is more polarity based, so zero or one. However, if we're going to understand if someone feels better or worse, that's not enough. And that was what I talked about a little bit about the negative three to three scaling. So for you NLP people out there, if you wanna tackle this, yeah, go for it. It's, it's very much needed. So what else is there in this space? basically using technology to help make mental health care more accessible and understanding how people use these resources? Well, a lot. <laughs> so in research, there's been, most of the research has been done in detection of symptoms. So anxiety and depression on Twitter, in electronic health records, which is software used by the hospital system to track um, patients and patient appointments and a lot of other stuff. And that's mostly done in Georgia Tech um, there's also prediction of conversation outcomes. What makes a conversation in therapy um, effective or not? And so there's Stanford has done some, some research on that. Cornell has done some research on if a conversation is going to go end in a civil way or end in an offensive way. There's also um, more mainstream challenges that are starting to come out. So the Semival challenge, which is a challenge in the natural language processing community has recently focused on detecting offensive language, which is, which is really a part of helping make these um, online forums safe and inclusive. More uh, specifically, there's also been a lot of human computer interaction um, research done on this, not only in like how to detect these depression or anxiety symptoms, but what should we do when we detect it? Should we route experts to, to posts 
that need um, help or you know, what should we do? So that's in the field of HCI as well. In industry, there's also been a lot done in helping make mental health care more accessible. Um, and it's a bit more broad than the research side. So there's been telemedicine, which is basically uh, trying to deliver health care and in this case, counseling services, et cetera, using online services. So a lot of hospital systems like NYU Langone is starting some talk space, uh, which is one of the biggest, biggest players out there, also matches people with online counselors. Then there's also community moderation and detection of toxicity, which a lot of startups such as Coco, Google's Perspective API, Twitter, Facebook are doing. And then there's the more experimental methods, such as using chatbots as a way to engage people and to help deliver simple cognitive behavioral therapy when psychiatrists or therapists aren't available. And, you know, Wobot and X2AI are some players in that market. So obviously there's a lot to be done and there's, it's, this field has been, you know, progressing with leaps and bounds from both the research and the industry side. However, a key question isn't simply to, you know, how can we do these things and how can we detect symptoms of various disorders, but what should we do once we detect or once we understand what's happening? And that's not just a question for computer scientists. This field necessitates people from all aspects, from therapists, psychiatrists in the medical field, computer scientists such as us to help parse out the data and the text out there, as well as people in ethics and privacy, because more than ever, now there's so much access to smartphones, but we must be careful in thinking about how to actually put this research into the hands of people, and that requires the help of everyone. Thank you very much. Any questions? Yes. Yeah, so going to change or not about the I guess the question I have is, are you trying to assess when the person starts changing their sentiment in the way they talk, or are you trying to um, estimate when the person themselves feels better? Like, what's your way to that? So it's the first one. It's very hard to understand, you know, like, is the person actually feeling better? But what we can get from data is, is the way that they express emotion and is the way that they express sentiment better? And so that's what we could reliably get. Yeah. When, how, like, how subjective or human assessments of the moment of change? Right, so we actually took a lot of time in devising our experiments or in our AMT, um, well, we use a different thing, but in our worker experiments. And so we made sure that we had our instructions were very clear in what a negative three sentiment was in comparison to like a negative one sentiment. And yeah, so we, we made sure that people were on board and we had training. Yeah. Any other questions, thoughts? Cool. Well, if you want to talk more about mental health care, digital mental health care, natural language processing, deep learning, whatever, yeah, would love to talk. Thank you. <laughs>